Welcome. This is Barry Jones from the Angel School, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for January the 21st through the 27th, 2019. So let's take a moment to take a deep breath and to allow ourselves to find refuge in the sanctuary of our of our souls and we do this by breathing and relaxing and letting go of all the concerns that and that are that are on our minds um, and we just say a little prayer right now asking your angels to handle all the concerns that just come across your mind and to start creating solutions so they're writing out the word stagnation and it would seem that you are feeling as though you things aren't happening that maybe you feel like you're waiting or you're stuck and so ask the angels to help clear your mind okay to for clarity pray for clarity to clear your mind so that you can um, no longer perceive what's not happening and that somehow that they can help you to let go of that particular point of focus so that you can be open to other areas of focus where there is much more um, fluidity of movement, of spiritual awareness, intuitiveness. You know, you're, you're stuck because you're st what you're stuck on isn't moving it, and it's it's like you're you've beat it to the ground they wrote the word fossil <laughs> and it's like you've beat it to the ground and from how you're feeling you're not going to get much more out of that you need they wrote the word laughter you know you laughter is a release a, a huge form of release it also says that what you were looking at or the way you were looking at it that you have um, relinquished the tensions around it you you've let go of the way that you're approaching it and your your willingness and you're ready to see it from a different approach laughter is sort of breaking up the stagnation and so um, whenever you feel like you're suspended and there's the, the, in a particular way, um, you need to do something fun. You need to break this momentum you have because it's not working. And instead of letting it go, you keep trying to continue to plow forward and you're just going to get the same results. They're, they also wrote the word confession and they've been writing this. and there is a huge energy of this right now that I've been getting from um, in the last few weeks I had an encounter with uh, Crystal Davis uh, that's how they brought themselves forward to me and um, I just saw um, this large mass of crystals um, probably underneath the earth and um, they're available um, to help facilitate some of the things that are moving above the surface and there's this energy of confession and so this is a time right now where things may be really coming out truth is coming out um, on many uh, landscapes but in your own life and within the world this is going to be so important for you to sort of fess up to um, what's really on your heart, okay? 
and um, they're showing me this really elegant chair with a tall back that's kind of curved and, and sort of a wide, rounded seat. It looks like an antique. And um, this gives me a sense, whenever I see chairs, it's about reflecting. Um, and it's about, but this is such a comfortable, you know, velvet and very ornate and uh, very stylish. So um, the, it feels like something to reflect on, and I'm just kind of going with what I'm sensing. Um, to reflect on your gifts, to reflect on your, your creativity, um, to really um, sort of dive into the, to the depths of your soul. You know, there are things that you desire, things that um, really sort of amp your frequency, your energy, that get your passions and your, your juices flowing, and uh, you're ignoring them and because you're so busy and so worried about things that you think are really important, things that have become very stressful and they seem to be pressing their way, you know? It's like that annoying person when you're standing on this line for hours and this person decides they want to cut. And but it's not one, it's many. And this is kind of what your ego does. It cuts your, it cuts the line in terms of your spiritual priorities and just sort of d just distorts this and, and creates this mass confusion. You know what happens on lines when somebody tries to cut or several people tries to cut, it just starts, you know, this mass hysteria. Everybody's like, you know, gets um, uh, um, sort of roused up and, and, you know, and this is what happens to you. And it's sort of what's going on right now. And you've been standing in this line and possibly the, in front of the where this interruption has happened, that line has already gone and had received everything that they came there for. But the 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 way that the the ego has just kept interrupting and cutting uh, on this line of priority, you can't even see in front of it, and so you're stalling not because you, the line isn't moving in front of you. You're stalling because you got caught up in this thing. You got caught up in this wall of confusion, distortion that the, your ego's problematic mind, you know, it, it can't stop creating them. It's just going to come up with another one. So once you give into one problem and you, and you make it more important than the priority that you're, 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 you're on, then more is just going to gather to the point you won't be able to see a thing in front of you. And you'll be standing there. And if you could step outside of your body for a moment, just imagine that you're stepping outside of your body and you come around and you stand way out so you can see the entire line. If it's like on a street corner and you'll see that there's nothing happening in front of that area of confusion where your ego interrupted your priorities, that the path to your priority is clear and wide open, waiting for somebody, you, to move on and, and enter and, and go for what you came uh, to get. So this is what's sort of happening right now. You focus on, a, on an issue, no matter what it is, if it's making you unhappy, you are, this is, a, to some degree, you're stagnating. If this situation has um, just zapped all of your power, zapped all of your enthusiasm for something that you really deeply care about, because right now, it's so easy with all the craziness going on worldwide, but you know, it's always going on. But right now, we're looking at this craziness and we're really making a big deal out of it. And it's blocking, it's creating a wall for all of us that we are not about our spiritual purpose here. Because there's no amount of confusion or chaos in the world that has the power to interrupt that purpose. 
So you see that something is out of alignment. And, and they kept writing this word before it began. Alignment, alignment, alignment. And this is what you need to pay attention to so you don't get stuck around these various crises in, that are going on in your life and outside of your life or around you in the world or your community. You have to um, not give all of your attention to that wall. And what you need to do is that you need to, within the alignment of your soul and within its purpose and priority at the moment, you need to give of your divine essence, your gifts and your talents. Give of your talents. Utilize your talents in support of these things that you would like to contribute a solution. So if you're not contributing a solution, you're probably just complaining. And complaining is building the wall. Solutions don't build walls. That is to say that walls that block you, that stagnate the process. So if you're feeling like you're at a wall it's in something, some area of your life, it's because you're given attention, and they're writing family, so you take that for what it means. Um, but, but if you're doing this, then it's the attention, the way that you're giving your attention. It's not saying that you need to ignore, but the, it's about the kind of attention you give to something. That's what's really important for you to recognize and for you to shift. Because the, depending on the way you give your attention to something, you're either a part of the problem, not in alignment with your soul, or you are part of the solutions. You are in alignment with your soul. Because your soul can only offer well-beingness, can only offer creativity opportunities. Anything else is ego. And I mean that in a very general sense. It's ego. It's fear. Um, you, it, it, it's, it's, all, it's just a negative focus. And a negative focus is going to build a wall. And you may not even see sometimes that you're building the wall because it's so incremental. And it just all of a sudden one day sneaks up on you, you, you open your eyes and bam, you've built an entire tall wall and you can't do much. And now you can't see anything and you don't even know how you got yourself in it because you can't see. And you have to step out of that line. You have to, you have to step out of that line. That means you have to step out of that ego, uh, you know, I, got I can fix this, I, I can do this, I can fix this. No, let me fix this. No, no let's, let me fix everybody. You know, let, let, let me make it all better. When sometimes it's just better to leave it alone. Sometimes, it's, sometimes the solution is I can't do anything about this right now. I can't. I have to move on. I have to do what's right for me. I need to do what's right for me. I need to get out of this. I need to get out of it no matter what the consequences are for anybody else. I need out. And don't worry about anyone else because the only reason that it's, it's still going on for you is because you are in it. And as long as you are in it, it's going to go on for everybody else too. When one person has the courage to pull out, then it will eventually start a chain reaction. doesn't matter how long it takes for everybody else to pull out. But if they want to stand there, let them stand there. But with one less voice, of the original voices that are, are joining in this confusion, one less voice diffuses it. It doesn't seem as important any longer. And it's the same when you are so fixated on your own problems that you'll realize if you go do something else that isn't a problem, that that is not as big of a problem as it seemed when you were in the illusion. Because fear blows things out of proportion. I mean, this is the general rule of thumb that you should 
always be aware of. You have no real clarity. I mean, you could be arguing your point from here to, and you could have everything checked, you know, like, like nobody can say you're not wrong on paper. But if it's creating the confusion and the anxiety that you're experiencing, you aren't you, your information, the way you're receiving the, the experience is not accurate. Even if your fact, every, everything that you're in it for can be fact checked, you still are losing or surrendering clarity, sp spiritual clarity. And so that you don't know when to draw the line for your soul's integrity and alignment. Hear that. This is about not knowing when to draw the line for those two things, for spiritual integrity and alignment. Because if you're in it with the ego, you have already compromised those. And there is nothing more important to, because these are the only things that lead to true perception or perspective of happiness. And success, love, love, success, these things are first should be owned, possessed by the feeling of them. We often put the thing as the destination in order to say that we are successful or happy or loved, but this is not real. This is a distortion of the ego. This is what we mean by you can't have um, true clarity or accuracy about anything. You're not in alignment, you're compromised. The integrity of your intention is compromised whenever you think this way. The feeling is what you need to promote. And this can only be promoted and experienced when you turn it all around. And it's not about the destination or arriving, acquiring it, but it's getting there all along the way. How you apply yourself to the process, how you apply yourself to the process, how you apply yourself to the process, how you apply yourself to your attitude to the process, how you apply your talents to the process how you apply your passion to the process, your enthusiasm to the process, your solution-oriented, positive alignment to the process. If you are focusing on how you're applying yourself to the process and correcting when you don't feel good about being in the process and, and not getting all panicked about that you because that's when the ego will create a problem oh well you're throwing yourself into this and you're not going to have enough money it always goes for the jugular you know oh you're never going to be you're going to be alone for the rest of your life if you keep doing it this way if you keep applying yourself to this prior spiritual priority you it'll tell you all those things that scares the living daylights out of you because no one wants to be alone, no one wants to be sick, and no one wants to be without money. And no one wants to be without the approval of others, which they have come to expect means that they are successful if they have it. But if you are doing, if you remember why, what inspired you in the first place, that is your purpose, that is your intention. And if you apply the, the integrity of this to every moment of what you're doing. You want it to help the world. You want it to make it a better place. Well, you can do that no matter what it is you're doing. Don't be so focused about the what I'm doing, this plan I had that, that was my idea of how this would make me successful. But be happy with this simple desire that you had, simple intention to make the world a better place. You can do that all day long, offering a smile, um, 
being encouraging to someone, uh, giving advice to someone, helping someone to learn something, helping someone to to get better. I, I mean, I'm not even being specific in what I am hinting at, but you can almost begin to hear the different types of professions that this would allow you to do and things that, that you don't consider professions, but it's just the everyday beingness that you can contribute greatly. And if you do not exclude anything where it is possible to do this, then you can find joy. You can find love. You can find the feeling. I mean, the feeling of these things, success. You can find the feeling of prosperity. You can feel the feeling of a life that is meaningful. So don't, 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 um, don't dock yourself. Do you know what I mean? I mean, in, in, I guess in two ways I mean that. Don't dock yourself like, like a boat. Just, you know, put yourself up like, I, I can't do anything. And don't dock yourself like, don't, don't dock your value of, 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 of your, you being alive and what you can do. But it's the way you approach that either creates this sense of purpose or the way you approach by focusing on the things that are problems and and then all you can see within yourself are problems you don't see how um, um, useful your your life is when you are in a negative mindset you criticize yourself as well as the world when you're in that state of mind when you're out of alignment there's no good going on. Nothing's good happening in the world. It's all going to a hell and a handbags. All these things. But do you realize that it, it, throughout times, throughout the ages, there have been people who thought the world was great and people who thought the world was terrible because beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. And that is where you need to bring, if you want to get control, there is where you start care about how you feel. All right, let's take a look at the Archangel Oracle card for the week that gives us a sense of what energy is going on and for the week. And we have Archangel Sandal Foam. And the card is titled Gentleness. So this is a week wherein um, the, I believe that the energy, there's a gentleness in the energy a support, a love, it's always there. This is never lacking. But what is, is how we feel. And if we get ourselves caught up in certain things, then this could change. And so the Archangel Sandophone is reminding us to be gentle, to surround ourselves with um, people of like-mindedness. You know, um, you can choose. This is your power in, it, in navigating the course of what you the contrast. Let's call it contrast because we want to be gentle about it and, and not... Um, um, instigate our ego to start being negative but you get to choose how you want to live within the contrast you get to choose how you the people you want to interact with within the contrast you get to choose how you are going to handle a situation of contrast, you get to choose the position you're going to take. And you can either take the position of the argument or you can take the position of your soul's inner wellness and peace. You don't have to get involved in everything in order to help. Remember, just by not engaging it, you make other you allow other people to think for a moment now they can accuse you but that's their problem they, they can accuse you of anything but that's still their problem and they're still going to be thinking about why you've chosen to to stay out of it it's, it's gonna you know cause them to say well, hmm. they can't fully go with what they were thinking if everybody is not 
thinking the same way. This is how we are. It's like, if everybody's thinking the same way, we don't even think. <laughs> you know, we just go with the crowd. But if you, if you decide for yourself and, it's, and it removes you from the crowd, that will weaken what is going on. But more importantly, it's strengthening you to, to be in alignment with the light the wisdom, the gifts, the frequency that your soul can give off and make available for others to, to, um, to witness. And when they witness within you, they are able then to witness the same level of love and peace within themselves. Okay? So very, very important. So I get a sense of paying attention to... Um, you know, um, how you create your space. Um, be aware of yourself as almost like um, an element within the environment. And you can choose what kind of element you wish to be. What, what is the gift that you want to offer to that environment so that others may partake of this. But that will um, only work if you are aware of the importance of alignment. You can nurture it. So they're showing me as sort of these um, old goddess pictures, you know, um, or statues, the woman with the, the big breast and sort of big body. And, and it's sort of like um, uh, uh, this, this nurturer. So you, by, by deciding to be in alignment with your soul's integrity, you become the nurturer. You're, you're, you become this nurturing energy that everyone else can um, receive support and sustenance, spiritual sustenance from. And they want you to know this is not an obligation. But if you so choose, it will become, uh, it will become a natural reaction. Okay? All right, so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on and let's see what's coming up in the week with the c cards here. I feel like more will we'll understand a little bit more. Okay, so we have the, the wheel card here. And this gives us a positive um, sort of feeling um, for a shift. So in this week, there is this positive, this, this wheel card um, is sort of, I feel like it's sort of moving through the energy of the week. And it's um, a building that we should feel or sense a shift, a turn. This shift, again, depends on your choices. You get to experience a shift but I get a very strong sense that it depends on your choices. And they're, they're showing me the word release. So that means you've got to be willing to release some things, to let things go. They're showing me a cross, which is my symbol for suffering. And that means you don't have to suffer unnecessarily in this situation. You can carry your cross. They're showing me somebody carrying the cross. It's like you, like you carry it on your back. And there is something that you are hanging on to that you carry everywhere with you. It's like a, a chip on your shoulder, but it's pain. And you, it is informing everything that you see, everything that you engage. And I know, I know, and I get this sense from the angels, they know that you know, they, they want you to know that they know you don't want to be that way. They know you want to let it go. Deep down inside, and this is the confession thing. Until you confess it to yourself, even if it's out loud or in a writing, somehow you need to acknowledge that you need help with this. And it may be that you may need to say to other people, I know I'm hard to, d to deal with. I know um, that I'm always down on myself because it could be various ways that this is coming out. You know, you may say, I know that I'm, um, 
I'm always sad or whatever it is, because it doesn't have to be something that we in, in these same veins, it could be other things, you know, um, that you're the right in the word humble, that you are someone who's kind of meek and mild and and you you're afraid to speak up. And so you, you kind of uh, keep things to yourself. And the thing is, if you just get it out and you just say it out loud and um, it will relieve you and it will help others to help you to carry that cross, because people when we're honest, it draws out compassion in others. And they, and you'll find that people are willing to support you. Why? Because everybody has a cross on their back. Everybody does. We're not, none of us are alone in our fears. None of us are alone in the, the, the traps that our egos creates for us this relentless um, problem solving, worrying and concern and afraid of risk and afraid of losing this. We're all in this together. And people who act out like we see a lot of acting out in our country right now. It's the same fear, though, just expressed in a different way. And we all Except that we all share the same fears, which is just either side is not willing to admit it to the other. That's when we'll all get, that's when we'll find or be able to experience the support for one another. Or you'll feel that you are supported from the other side. So the lack of support from the two sides is because that they're all uh, masking their, their fears. And this is the time of confession, because this is the only way to get to the, to the truth and the only way to get to the solutions. So there's a potential for shift this week in our lives personally and on a world's sort of stage. And here we have the Emperor, another major arcana card. So this indicates um, that there may, that a leader, this could be uh, a world leader, um, you know, where this shift may occur or for a, a group of leaders, there may be a shift, there may be a dynamic in your own life. Um, and I feel like this masculine energy, this hard as nails kind of approach is what we need to soften in this week. We need to soften, and oh, this reminds me, I was in my meditation, when I woke up, I saw um, sort of a male phallic symbol and, uh, and a female, and I saw the male phallic symbol like as confronting as if it was an animated person. And it, and so it's the same idea that, you know, we keep trying to force something. Um, there's an energy, the masculine energy is being used in an aggressive manner. And it's not balanced with the feminine energy. We cannot do anything without this balance. There, you, without that balance, you don't have alignment. You don't have um, a chance in hell, <laughs> so, for lack of better words, to reach a solution or resolution. Because when it's out of balance, there's pain. This pain that's motivating, that's pushing um, uh, the, the um, it's influencing the situation and we need to let that go. So there needs to be a softening of this energy in this week. And there, there's a potential for this to shift. It's a potential for this to shift when, when we start thinking about our priorities, when we come up with a plan, um, a way to deal with these things is sort of in, in a, you make a list. So make a list. You know, we talked about putting things in the calendar. But now let's uh, add a second component to this where make a list 
uh, what's the number one priority, okay? And to the least, all right? And some of that, by the time you get to the least, some of that stuff you'll realize, well, I don't need to, do that. I don't need to think about this right now, right? But this will help you to do that. And it may also um, help you to realize some things that you're, you're, where you're stagnating and and what priorities are being usurped by you know this 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 energy because you're just so fixated on the problem so that thing that's really hot like it's like full of panic and strife and stress take that and pull that out and put it to the side and then make the list and then after you make the list see where that needs to to fall in it may not seem as hot um, after you work with it that way. All right, let's take a look at the card for the end of the week. Now, this is interesting because I feel like this is more of a telling a story. And it's the six of summer coming up here. It makes me feel like, you know, that we can get a little childish about things, right? Um, that it could be meaning not only childish because it's a reaction from the past or or something that's happened in, in your childhood um if for instance you've always felt like nobody respects you all right this is going to be like the cross that's going to drive your your actions that has to be let go and if you're still blaming people for things that happened in the past this is the point of clarity that you really need to see how this is not working for you, how it's supplementing the word I'm seeing, all of the things that you, all the happiness, what I'm seeing, that you could have right now. You could have it right now if you weren't carrying that. And, and, and for some reason, we believe we need to carry it because I, I don't ever want to forget. But see, when you say, I don't ever want to forget, that means you don't want to really um, be open to new memories. Because if you can't forget, you have no room or you have less room for new memories. And you say, well, I have new memories because I live every day and there's new things that, that, that happen. Yeah, but those new things that happen are still based upon that past action. So they're not new memories. They're a replay. They are a variation, a recycling, better word, of old memories. So you're living a recycled life until you let those go. Uh-oh. Light bulb, right? That's really clear. You're just living a recycled life. And that's why you see so many problems. Because it's the same struggle. If you let go of the, the cause of those struggles, like, you know, no one ever respected me, or it was because of this. I mean, you know, because you talk about it all the time. And you just need to find a way to not want to always own that. All right, let's take a look at the card that I've already pulled from the bottom of the deck, and it's the Strength card. And this is interesting because we have three major Arcana cards here. And we got here the Lamb and the Lion, the Peace. So this gives me a sense that we may see some kind of peaceful resolution in this week, or at least a beginning, some kind of break where the, the, the two sides can come together on something. It may not be much, but much is better than, a little is better than what you didn't have before, right? And so um, don't be afraid to confront this you know it's like the lion and the lamb and if you think you're the lion or the you, you think you're the lamb you know you you have a uh words about how you see the other side and that's what i'm talking about like there's there's strength in understanding there's strength in compassion open yourself to it 
So I send you lots of love and angel blessings. And thank you for joining us. If you're looking for an angel reading, you can uh, contact me at theangelschool.com, which you can find in the description link below. Um, if you haven't joined us for the daily card messages on my Facebook page, um, there's a link below for that. And um, you can also uh, reach us through Twitter for all of these things, the videos and the daily card messages. And um, again, have a beautiful week, everyone, and God bless you all.